So we are talking about how to draw the chart for implied volatility using Stata. Um, for this, you need the uh, pre-written command called uh, fetch, your user written command called fetch Yahoo options. Uh, you can install it through my website uh, following this link. Uh, use the uh, option force just in case if you have it already installed on your you know, campus computer. Uh, we want to replace the existing one. And um, so uh, the first line is actually using the actual command. And you need to be careful with the syntax as it, uh, you know, like any other computer programming language, it follows a very specific syntax. And I'm using the 2023 April 21st maturity. That's from today. Today is April the 2nd. Uh, the first maturity that's available to us uh, on a monthly. And then uh, this is the May 19th. This is the second nearest uh, maturity. So I'll go through one by one. I'm just going to copy paste this into Stata and then see what sort of data we download. Um, takes a minute. And then you see how they're both downloaded. Now, if you get an error that they're not downloaded, then please check to make sure that your maturity dates are actually uh, future looking. You cannot download historic options data from Yahoo. So uh, I want to just look at to look at the data and just to make sure that you know we downloaded all there. So and no notice how we have call options and put options and and all that. So then the next step is to make sure that we actually just deal with call uh, or the call options. And obviously, depending on your like. You could, um, you know, do the assignment with respect to put options, and um, you know, it just that it, it it's actually imperative that you do it either for calls or puts, um, and and that you do not actually combine them on the same chart. Um, we also want to keep the last traded date as the last actual trading date that we had. So for us, for today's video, this is actually the thirty first of March, twenty twenty three. This is to make sure that we don't have any leftover. Uh, data that will look our chart out of place. So now that we actually have all the cleanup housekeeping, uh, you can look at the data and um, it will look a little bit smaller um, compared to what we had before. We only have about 62 um, observations. So we're going to drop any uh, implied volatility on Yahoo that has a zero or a missing variable. This is again part of the uh, housekeeping. We had none, but there's a reason I actually picked Apple. We talked about this a lot in class and uh, it's usually a, a stock that has good um, lecture material data. I also like to drop any strike prices where the price is more than 10% or any strike price where the price is less than uh, 90%. So 10% up, 10% down, we are actually uh, dropping them. So we'll drop probably about, yeah. So let's take a look at again, our data. Uh, notice now that we have about 21 observations, which are supposed to, or should give us a, a, a good data. Now, what we need is we are gonna create a, um, a new variable just so that we can actually see this on the chart um, on top of each other. Uh, so we need to actually separate the data. The first one I'm gonna call IV Yahoo A, for April, and then IV Yahoo M for May. And um, just make sure that what you have here is the current um, date, meaning this is the date that's supposed to be equal to this. So I'm gonna fix that now. So 21st of April, 2023 for April, and then 19th of May for 2023, and then we basically just generate these. Now notice right here that we're gonna have two new data and then we wanna draw the chart. And that's the purpose of this uh, video anyway. So we're gonna have a first line chart for the April implied volatilities and then another line chart for the May implied volatilities. I wanna scale it to a half a size so it actually looks a little bit better. So let's take a look. Keep in mind that this is the implied volatility. And right here on the horizontal, we have the strike prices. Right here on the vertical, we have the actual implied volatilities. And this is for Apple. 
Uh, the blue line is for April, and then the red line is for May. Now, I would have expected them to look a little bit more uh, like a smile, because this is the volatility smile it's supposed to be. But, uh, you know, it's important that you, you know, notice that at around the current level, you have a better efficiency, and therefore the implied volatility should be a um, little bit more on the efficient side. And, and therefore, any sort of implied volatility that's less than 20, um, we actually see that actually reflected on the option pricing. And then on the downside, this is deep in the money. Now, remember, these are all call options. So when you're looking at the current price of, say, around 164, now you look at a $150 strike. This is deep in the money call options. And that actually gives you a little bit of a higher of a um, of an implied volatility. Now the red line is for May, and um, and notice how the implied volatility shift up uh, for that increased maturity. And um, so that's all for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.